Puppy's World here, guys. Take an HDMI to the next level. I bring to you today HDMI 2.1. Do I need it? What is it for? What will it do? And should I upgrade? HDMI article in Sound and Vision at soundandvision.com. That will explain for you briefly what HDMI 2.1 will be offering to the scene. Now, let me start by quickly saying though that they will not be shipping these products out until 2018, at least developing them and announcing them April to June 2017 time. So you will not be seeing a 2000, or a, an HDMI 2.1 cable at the earliest possible, maybe the beginning of 2018, but even then you'd have to probably order up one hell of a cable and you'd be the first one to get it if you got it in about January of 2018. So no need to buy them right now, no need to scramble around because they're, they're not available, you can't buy them. They've recently just released the, you know, the outcoming of these, so... They're brand new. What are they? Why would you need them? And should you buy one? Okay, I'll go into quickly this, guys. The fact that the difference between HDMI 2.0 and 2.1, there's a big difference. And on paper, specification-wise, it makes it seem like it's a huge leap in technology. And it's something, if you have 4K, you must use. Absolutely not. Totally a bullshit claim all by the audio companies to get you to go out and buy more cables. Um, I know I've talked about the cable uh, issue in the past before, about the longer the cable, the worse the cable. Um, and that, you know, that's, that is relevant to, to these days. However, we're not going to get into video interference issues or how long an HDMI cable can and shouldn't be. We're going to simply talk about HDMI 2.0 versus 2.1. I've got a few AudioQuest cables here, brand new, as I am building, or in the midst of building my complete theater build um, at my other property, not at this house of course, um, with a 200 inch screen for projection, um, a Wolf Cinema projector, uh, a couple of Marantz surround sound processors and receivers, including my Pioneer SC97 and 99 as well, um, and then of course I've added a Emotiva XPS Gen 3 uh, amplifier in there soon to arrive, which I'll do a video on as well. Um, but if you ask the question, what HDMI cables is are, are I using or am I going to use? Simply HDMI 2.0. There is no need, nor do I want to upgrade to HDMI 2.1. Why? Well, let me quickly run through the specifications and the differences. Okay, as HDMI 2.0 will state, that has been around since about late 2013. Since 2013, HDMIs have been either 1.4 or 2.0. As you can see here, I have a brand new, I have a few brand new HDMI cables boxed up and ready to go into my new theater build install. Um, I'm running vodka, of course, straight from video processor into display. So if you're using 4K television, I recommend using a higher cost, uh, shorter HDMI cable if possible. Um, does it need to be 2.1 though? Absolutely not, guys. Let me run through the specifications on HDMI 2.0 quick, as they're pretty much listed right here for you. 
transmits 18 gigabytes per second up to 4K 60p and 4K 3D when used with 2.0 electronics. Yes, when you're passing through something that can do HD CP 2.2, you'll have no problem doing 4K or audio or Dolby Atmos, DTSX, object-based surround sound, or object-orientated surround sound. No problem whatsoever running HDMI 2.0. Now, the difference between 2.0 and 2.1 is simply bandwidth and refresh rate or frame rate. Bandwidth is the big one, and refresh rate is the second biggest one. What those things come into play, or when they come into play, and why, is mainly for computer gamers, people that are using HDMI cables to go from their tower PC into their 4K display, and when they're moving around a lot or playing games like Call of Duty, and what I mean is this is refresh rate. When I, hope, I don't have to make you sick, guys, but that's in terms of refresh rate. How fast your screen was able to show this to that. To this is refresh rate. So the specifications on an HDMI 2.0 cable, if I'm not mistaken, are 18 gigabytes per second, you know, bandwidth, and 60p frame rate or refresh rate. The specifications for 2.1 will be this, 48 gigabytes per second in terms of bandwidth, and 120p for refresh rate. Does that make a difference? Of course it makes a difference. It'll make a difference if you're in Japan running an 8K video signal. And yes, HDMI 2.1 will be able to maximally display a 10K video signal. Is that relevant to us here in the United States? Is that relevant to most audiophiles? Absolutely not. Do not buy into that as it is a complete uh, bullshit claim to get, you know, to get you to run out and, oh God, I gotta get a new 4K television right away if 8K and 10K are coming out. Guys, not gonna see it for a long time. So, back to specifications. Um, you know, I could run through the different lineups that AudioQuest offers for HDMIs, but you can do that on your own. This is not about what all, you know, what AudioQuest offers for HDMIs. This is about HDMI 2.0 versus 2.1. So, there's an amazing article on CES I'd, I would, uh, attempt, you know, to uh, get into in, in this video here, but I'm not going to. So I, I invite you to read that article written by a very good editor at CES. Um, there's also the Sound and Vision article in the May of 2017 issue that I first touched upon uh, that really goes over the full HD versus 4K versus 8K and what um, 2.1 will have versus 2.0. Um, the biggest things is the dynamic the dynamic high dynamic range the the better dyna, you know the better high dynamic range and the e audio return channel feature enhanced audio return channel it's not going to make that much of a difference guys with audio return channels it is not even possible to do dolby atmos or dtsx what i mean is to achieve dolby atmos or dtsx you need an, an actual proprietary signal coming from your surround sound receiver and then leaving the surround sound receiver going into your display makes no bit of difference what your audio is doing. So what I'm talking about here is I'll move into the other room for a second and I'll just show you how I have a vodka cable coming from my Marantz NR 1606 in my bedroom here. I have an HDMI vodka leaving the receiver here going into my television. Um, what makes, you know, would there be a difference if I put an HDMI 2.1 or 2.0 cable going to this display? Absolutely not. Even if this display were 4K, it would make no difference. It would still display a 4K image using that cable or even a shitty, you know, provided for you by the cable company. Most likely those cables are going to be 2.0 anyways. However, what I mean when I say it's not capable of passing through Dolby Atmos or DTSX, you actually need an HDMI cable leaving your media content player. So DVD player, or in this case, an Oppo UDP 203, most likely. You need an HDMI coming from your Oppo, going into your surround sound receiver. That's what will determine your surround sound capabilities. So that, I recommend staying with minimum 2.0. Yes, you can upgrade that to 2.1 one day, but there's no, nece there's no necessity to do that. Now, you're asking, well, if you're not going to upgrade your cable from your player to your receiver, would you want to upgrade the player, you know, the HDMI from your receiver to your TV? That would be the only way or method I would recommend ever upgrading an HDMI cable, simply because refresh rate, bandwidth, if you're using things like the internet through your smart TV, it could crosstalk between the audio return channel and the receiver by giving a higher bandwidth, giving a higher refresh rate of those kind of things, especially if you're using your receiver as a direct digital streamer. 
um, you're going to see faster images. You're going to hear audio come load faster and whatnot. Um, but does it matter for 4K? Absolutely not. All these will pass through 4K. I've got a few new cables here, obviously. I'm just going to quickly take them out of the box and show you them really quick. So, I've got a chance to have a few brand new ones while I'm doing my theater build here. And I wanted to quickly show you how they differ from some other traditional HDMI cables. So we got a brand new carbon here, and I've got some other carbons right here too. Um, here's a three meter and a two meter. I'll pull out the two meter and kind of compare the two for you as it's just length is gonna be the difference. However, I do recommend getting a quality HDMI 2.0 cable as you will be good for several years. Now, I talked about 2018 being the release date for two, you know, for 2.1, as I am pretty certain that that will be the soonest you'll be able to actually buy an HDMI 2.1 cable. Um, will I buy one? No, not unless they come out with an 8K television that is requiring a 2.1 cable to operate on display video. As of now in technology, for the next year, say, I am 100% absolutely positive that HDMI 2.0 cables will be sufficient in passing through 4K 60p and 1080p 60p video signals and audio signals, even through your audio return channels. Now, I mentioned how there's no Adobe Atmos or DTSX possible through an audio return channel, nor is there one possible through an enhanced audio return channel. You need an actual HDMI cable going from the player into your receiver. Now, in some cases, people would be miss, you know, would be missing that theory going from a receiver directly into their TV as their one HDMI cable. That's fine. What do you have connected from your DVD player to your receiver? If you have, say, component video and maybe a digital toss link or optical connection, you will not receive Dolby Atmos or DTS-X. No, it won't happen. It must be through HDMI 2.0 minimum. Will upgrading to 2.1 do you any good for the surround sound or audio in the future? No, it will not. It is only required for the 4K 120 hertz or P refresh rate. That is the only thing that 2.1 will achieve. Now, taking a look close up at these HDMI cables, I'm going to pop the cap off this one here. I'm going to grab my flashlight, and I'm just going to show you really quickly what the pins and inside connections of these look like with a brand new cable. We've got a chance here to look at this brand new carbon cable, and I can compare a few if you want, but looking at this, all these pins all do a certain function. One does audio, the other one does audio return, the other does video, the other one does video return. Signals and passing through and talking and whatnot. Um, will there be more pins on an HDMI 2.1 or will it be thicker? No, there won't be more pins and yes, it'll have to be almost twice as thick. The specifications as I talked about for 2.1 are maximum 48 gigabytes per second, 120p for refresh rate. These cables are only capable of doing 18 gigabytes per second, which is a hell of a lot, guys, and 60p. Where that would make a difference or where that would make an improvement is possibly only in a, I could guess, maybe in a home in Naples, Florida that I have seen in a $10 million beach house with multiple surround sound processors, multiple amplifiers, and multiple projectors leading into one giant 500 inch screen. That's an unheard of theater build. There'd be no need or requirement for that ever. Why I've seen that is simply because it was someone's hobby and they were using HDMI, what? 2.0. There is no need even for that gentleman to upgrade to 2.1. The only need or necessity would be if you were living in Japan, say, constantly watching an 8K video source and it just the 4K wasn't doing it for you. That'd be the only need I would ever see to jump into a 2.0 cable. I'm, I'm sorry, jump from a 2.0 to a 2.1 cable. Now, if I kind of just compare the two cables here, they should be exactly the same. However, I've got a 2 meter and a 3 meter length here. So, the difference between the two is a little bit of thickness, believe it or not. The 3 meter cable as I talked about before, 
is slightly thicker than the two meter cable. Why that is, in my opinion, and I'm not 100% fact checked based on that or fact based on this, um, is because interference. Interference can create a problem when you have a length of 10 feet versus 7 feet. Um, with an HDMI cable that is 10 feet long, it might run into video shielding issues like interference or lines in the screen. Um, version 2.1 actually will have the same problem. It'll have the same issue. Longer cable, more expensive, and worse. Video interference issues, whatnot, all sorts of problems. Um, so, it just isn't worth it, guys, to upgrade. I am telling you, if you would like some true literature on this, I recommend going to CES's website and typing in HDMI 2.1 or soundandvision.com and typing in HDMI 2.1. Those are going to give you the true specifications on them and whatnot and the rundown of what they are, what they look like, how they'll achieve better performance than the 2.0. But in my true opinion, guys, I have to say HDMI 2.1. It's just another audio and video myth out there to get you to spend more money. So, what is Puppy's World recommendation? Stick with your HDMI 2.0, guys. It'll be no problem. Don't upgrade until you hit maybe late 2018 and you run into TVs that are requiring HDMI 2.1. Question. Will HDMI 2.1 be compatible with HDMI 2.0? Yes, absolutely. Say you just bought a TV today, or say you're planning on buying a 4K television in the future, right? Most likely, it'll be capable of passing through an HDMI 2.1 signal. However, they will all be backwards compatible. Right now, there is no problem with operating a 4K television that you just bought from the store, even a brand new Sony at $10,000. There is no problem operating a 2.0 cable, as I stated before. There aren't even the 2.1 cables out yet in existence. So, operating a 2.1 cable in the future would make absolutely no difference until one thing would happen only. They came out with an 8K content source, meaning an 8K Blu-ray. If you actually got an 8K Blu-ray disc, which foreseeable in the future will happen, yes, um, it might not actually work on your HDMI 2.0 cables. That's irrelevant at this point. That's frivolous and stupid now. We just don't have... Nobody has the, the time or interest to really care about that, I don't think. And if they did, well, they'd have enough money to buy HDMI 2.1 anyway, so watching this video is pointless. Um, but guys, I have, to, I have to really reiterate the fact that it is audio hype. There is nothing that I have ever found that HDMI 2.1 will not or is incapable of passing through that would, you know, cause or make a need for improvement. Um, the only improvement that I see in 2.1 is the bandwidth, like I said, being 48 gigabytes per second, and the refresh rate being 